chances are that you enrolled in Tellarian Community College for the opportunity to study under one of our great tutors. If you were enrolled in my class, then I can only apologize. Maybe next year you'll have better luck. Tutors are a great way to improve your odds for success, and used in the right way can help your decks perform way more consistently. They're at the heart of many combos and strategies, and in some formats, they even go out of their way to grab cards out of the sideboard in order to adapt to situations, while also keeping their win conditions safe from hand disruption. There's another way to tutor that you may not know about if you picked up Magic the Gathering more recently, though, and that is Transmute. Transmute is a keyworded ability that was introduced back in 2005 with Ravnica, City of Guilds. The mechanic for the Demir Guild, it featured on 13 cards. Transmute allows you to pay a cost and discard the card with Transmute from your hand in order to search your library for a card of the same converted mana cost as the card you discarded. So far, the cost to transmute has been 3 mana. You can only transmute at sorcery speed, so it's not quite as useful as cycling, as you'll not be able to hold up mana to transmute during an opponent's turn. Much like cycling, though, you're not actually casting a spell. So in order for an opponent to counter this ability, they would need a niche effect, like Void Made Husher or Disallow that's able to counter an activated ability. Either way, if someone does elect to transmute, it's usually better to hold that counter for whatever is tutored up. The main exceptions to this are if you expect an opponent to be able to recur that card easily, if the spell is likely to have split second, or if the spell is likely to have storm. Transmute is a pretty strong ability all said and done, so how's it best used? Well, speaking of storm, let's go back in time a little. One of the many benefits of the Talarian Community College is access to totally safe and in no way dangerous time rifts. Brian Gates qualified for the 2006 Pro Tour in Honolulu by playing a blue-green storm combo deck to win at an extended format Pro Tour qualifier. The goal of the deck was to use a combination of Heartbeat of Spring and Early Harvest to generate enough mana to cast a succession of cheap spells. The storm count generated by this line of play would culminate in a lethal brain freeze, milling out an opponent. Heartbeat of Spring also saw play at Pro Tour Honolulu itself, piloted to a top 8 finish for Maximilian Bracht. This iteration was a standard deck, and it utilized that same mana generation strategy to cast a big X spell to finish the game. This particular deck also ran Drift of Phantasms, a transmute card that could go and grab the key pieces of the deck. This card functioned well as an early game blocker against aggro decks, and a tutor to find what was needed. It's this versatility that makes transmute such an exciting ability, and the best of the transmute cards are the ones that offer the strongest effects that you'd like to be playing anyway. Of the transmute cards, a few in particular stand out for commander play. Talaria West, while a substandard university, they think they're so great just because they're accredited, is a great way to turn late game land drops into value plays by digging for utility land like Cabal Coffers, Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, or Strip Mine. Don't forget that it can also grab zero cost cards. Muddle the mixture as a counter spell when you need it, or a tutor when you don't. And there are more than enough two mana spells you can grab in Commander that you won't be short of targets. But there's one transmute card that I'd like to highlight in particular today, as I think it deserves to see more Commander play. That card is Demir House Guard. Demir House Guard is a 2 3 skeleton for 3 and a black. It has Fear, an evasion ability that allows only black or artifact creatures to block it. You can also sacrifice a creature in order to regenerate the House Guard. If you've not played with or against many Aristocrat-style decks before, it might seem an unassuming little card. What makes it good, though, is the fact you have a free sacrifice outlet and a tutor rolled into one card. Aristocrats is an archetype that many players love, and in Commander, free sacrifice outlets are the preferred option in most cases. Whether it's an Ashnod's Altar for generating mana, Altar of Dementia to mill or self-mill, or Goblin Bombardment to do damage straight to the face, not having to pay mana to sacrifice permanence is the goal all Aristocrats decks aim for. But ultimately, they're looking to capitalize on what happens when the creatures die. 
enchantments like Dictate of Erebos and Grave Pact, and the creature equivalent Butcher of Malakir all trigger when creatures die. Being able to hold up the ability to sacrifice a creature for free is an incredible advantage when it comes to negotiating your way through a multiple player game. They aren't the only effects worth triggering though. Whether you're looking at drawing cards through Moldervine Reclamation or Grim Horror Specs, draining or gaining life with Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat, or making treasure with a Pitiless Plunderer. There are countless ways to benefit from creatures dying. Now, of course, Demir Houseguard isn't the best tutor. It costs three at sorcery speed, and it's also restricted to grabbing spells that cost four mana, thanks to being a transmute card. Judging purely on those metrics, it's worse than Grim Tutor, Demonic Tutor, and Vampiric Tutor. What it has over those powerful cards, though, is flexibility. In the right deck, this is two cards in one. It's also far more easily recurred to be used again, being a creature rather than an instant or sorcery. And it doesn't hurt that instead of paying $15, $35, or $90, you can grab a copy of Demir House Guard for 50 cents. That's affordable for everyone. There is that one drawback, though. Only spells that cost four mana? How many good four mana spells can there be? Well, actually, quite a few. Given you'll be wanting to run Demir Houseguard in a deck all about sacrificing creatures for value, let's start there. Birthing Pod, one of the premier ways to access the creatures you need to answer, or further any board state you'll come across, just so happens to be four mana. This artifact is an extremely popular card in these styles of deck, and can help you access your combo or utility creature. If you're short on time and need to pull out an Eldrazi now, then consider grabbing Pattern of Rebirth. It allows you to tutor any creature in your deck into play for free when the creature Pattern of Rebirth is attached to dies, which, if you're playing Aristocrats, shouldn't be too much trouble. The aforementioned Grave Pact can also be fetched with Transmute, as can Falconrath Noble and Vindictive Vampire, two common pieces of the Aristocrats' Death by 1000 Cuts engine. For mana production, there's Pitiless Plunderer, a way to convert all of your death triggers into treasure, or Sifter of Skulls, who can make Eldrazi Scions when your creatures die instead. If you're stuck on lands, there's always Sad Robot. Though if you're in green, why not grab Sky Shroud Claim instead? If you're in white, this is a great way to grab Smothering Tithe, a card the rest of your pod is sure to be quote unquote happy about seeing. For card draw, Greater Good is the premier target, as it's a sacrifice outlet that can also filter you through large amounts of cards. The necessity to discard three cards each time may seem like a downside, but with the right reanimation effects, you'll be happy to fill your yard. A well-timed living death can really capitalize on this line of play. You can also grab Smothering Abomination or Guardian Project. Erebos, God of the Dead, or even Gaunti, Lord of Luxury. One of the better cards to search out if your creatures end up on the larger side, like Grave Titan, is Disciple of Bolas. For tokens, if your commander isn't Elenda the Dusk Rose, then digging her out of the deck if you can feel a board wipe coming isn't the worst plan. If you simply want to make more tokens, then Anointed Procession and Parallel Lives are both available at four mana too. If Alenda is your commander, you can use Demir House Guard to go grab Tesa Karlov, and vice versa. This strategy is also applicable to a deck with Marine of Clan Neltoth at the head. You could use the Transmute to dig out Jared, Golgari Lich, or the other half of the combo, Bone Horde. If you're concerned with getting things back from your graveyard and are wary that Regrowth and Eternal Witness aren't four mana, then fear not. Golgari Find Broker and Acolyte of Affliction are both available at four, and Luminous Broodmoth is a great way to ensure your creatures come back for free the first time they fall. For removal, there's plenty at this mana cost. Butter End is one of the most versatile, but sometimes grabbing Ravenous Chupacabra is the best way to get some recurrable removal into play. Four mana Wraths are also an option, with Damnation and Wrath of God being amongst the best options on offer. You could even grab Snuff Out on turn three and still have a way to play it for free if you're apprehensive about an opponent getting their commander out early. Heck, if you played your commander, Eilee Eternal Pilgrim on turn two, you could go grab Deadly Rollick and play that for free. 
Along those lines, Force of Vigor is another quote-unquote free spell that nullifies some of the tempo loss from tutoring by being able to be cast for free during an opponent's turn. And if graveyards are an issue, Agent of Erebos can solve it. If you're in an Aristocrat-style deck, chances are you'll have extra enchantments to re-trigger it in the future. Heck, if you're ready for the game to be over, you could do worse than tutoring up Triumph of the Hordes. Suddenly all of your utility creatures look a lot more threatening, don't they? If you're also in blue because you're playing Kel's Fight Fixer, you can grab Glen Elendra Archmage, Summary Dismissal, Cryptic Command, or even Aura Thief. I mean, you could also grab Notion Thief, but we're friends, right? You wouldn't do a dirty move like that, would you? If you're also in red, piloting a deck like Judith, the Scourge Diva, or Alesha, who smiles at death, access to Murderous Redcap, Sling Gang Lieutenant, and Perforos, God of the Forge, is honestly pretty exciting, too. The beauty of Demir Houseguard is that it's so, so easy to reuse. As a creature, there are countless ways to bring it back to your hand to use again. And if you do have it in play and someone tries to exile it, well, just activate the regenerate ability by sacrificing the Demir House Guard. While it won't regenerate itself as it won't be there, it'll still escape the removal and end up in your graveyard instead of in exile. Nice trick. In a format that many believe is suffering from power creep, it'd be all too easy to just fill your deck with the most expensive and versatile tutors. And at some tables, hey, maybe that's what's needed or what everyone wants to do. For many Commander players, though, they're seeking ways to keep games interesting and less linear. Demir House Guard is a budget tutor that can fulfill those goals. It's only as powerful as the cards you include that cost exactly four mana. If you're looking to hit that sweet spot between consistent but not overly oppressive, give this little guy a go. He's cheap and, well, he's not cheerful, but he will make you cheerful. And in the end, that makes me cheerful. Looking to add another Commander card class to your schedule? Expand your curriculum by clicking now and listening to this lovely lecture on Sunforger.